let me say greetings uh, from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, what we're trying to do here at this university is focus in on developing a quantum ready workforce. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about what our definition of that is. Uh, those of you who aren't familiar with us uh, or where Harrisburg is, we are in Pennsylvania. Harrisburg is the state capital of the state. It's actually a commonwealth, not a state technically, uh, but we're here up in the Northeast uh, of the United States. We're roughly a four hour drive, uh, almost due west of uh, New York City. Um, so we are a city school. We have our campus is based on essentially one building in the city of Harrisburg. Uh, there's a picture of it right there. Uh, although we do operate in buildings uh, on numerous other blocks in the area. So it's, it's kind of a distributed campus, if you will, in Harrisburg. Uh, we do have a campus in the city of Philadelphia, which is a much larger city. Uh, it's a tiny campus at this point, but we do have presence there and we hold classes and we have students there and all that good stuff. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's one or two floors in a building. So, uh, but we also are uh, going global. Uh, the university is uh, soon to announce a, a campus in in Central America, uh, as well as uh, perhaps a more than likely a, a campus in the Middle East. Uh, I don't want to say where they are yet because uh, I'll let the the press releases share that. But we are. Uh, trying to de develop a, a larger footprint, but we're, our primary focus is on developing uh, students and uh, economic development in central Pennsylvania. Uh, our student body is approximately 7,000 students. Of those, roughly 700 are undergrads, and we have around 6,300 graduate level. So you could think of us as primarily graduate uh, education. That's our, that's our bread and butter, uh, but we have been focused in on developing, uh, you know, the undergraduate programs as well as uh, some PhD. We probably have, uh, you know, 20 or 30 PhD students at this point. I didn't, I didn't bother to put it in there. Uh, the university is, was formed uh, just 15 years ago. So you can get a sense of where we are on that trajectory. Uh, we were uh, really uh, the first university to be, to be created in the state of Pens in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I believe, uh, over the past hundred years. So we are we are a fresh program and a fresh university, and uh, take from that as you as you wish. Uh, and we our programs are delivered in a hybrid fashion. So undergrads, for example are generally on campus, uh, but the graduate programs are generally what we call hybrid delivery, which means that uh, most of the uh, of a given course is held online, uh, but uh, uh, three times per semester, the students are expected to come to campus for a day on a weekend uh, to, to take classes in person. Now those, that requirement is actually a requirement from the visas that uh, our graduate students have. The vast majority of our graduate students are national, uh, are students of a nationality other than the United States. Uh, so they uh, depend on a visa to keep them in this country. Uh, they are all working uh, in the United States and various jobs, some of them quite good, I might say. Uh, and they, the graduate students come from all across the country. So oftentimes, in fact, usually I'll have people fly in from Denver or Los Angeles or Seattle uh, uh, for our classes. Uh, the quantum ones, which I'll get into in a minute, are, are being designed and are are designed for being online. 
uh, where, but however, uh, if you are a foreign national and you do have that requirement to physically come on campus, that is a visa requirement, uh, I'll, we can accommodate that in the classes. But uh, our quantum courses are being designed uh, for a global audience, um, in, meaning that students could come from any country in the world uh, and, and participate fully in the course online only. Uh, we have an open admissions policy for the most part, as far as I understand. I'm not an, an admissions person, uh, but essentially uh, there are very few admissions requirements to get into this institution. Uh, that has some positives and has some clear negatives, uh, but for the most part, uh, the application process is, is not uh, as competitive as some of the marquee name schools or, or other universities in the quantum master's space. Uh, in fact, we are probably the easiest to get into, so that's something uh, to consider. Um, and I, again, I'm not admissions, but uh, most students have funding uh, to various degrees. Uh, we, there are plenty of plenty of students in our student body that pay nothing uh, for, um, for tuition and fees and things like that. Something I'm quite proud of uh, is the whole university-wide program uh, that we're building here. Uh, this is just as background. We'll, we'll, I'll focus in on the masters. But to give you a sense of what we're trying to do here is develop quantum uh, content from uh, high school uh, through to PhD. Uh, presently in the high school programs we have, we've started, uh, I'll show you a little bit about that just because I think it's part of the story, uh, but we started last summer uh, having classes for high school and pre-college students uh, in quantum computing. Uh, right now, I am running a undergraduate class. In fact, I have to have a class later on this afternoon uh, in quantum computing. Uh, well, uh, QI, quantum information science. Uh, that is an undergrad class. It's a one-off. You know, it's a we call it a special topics course. So we're just trying it, it trying it out. So most notably for this uh, talk. Uh, we have a master's concentration in quantum information science. It's hosted uh, by our, I, our ISEM degree, which is a master's degree. It's the uh, information systems engineering and management degree. So we have a concentration underneath that degree. Uh, just to maybe spark some interest and maybe here over time, uh, whether people are interested in such things. I do want to say that uh, I am working on uh, developing a certificate program at the master's level uh, from our computer science group. And that would be a certificate that is specific to quantum computing. Notice the degree from ISEM is specific to quantum information science, which is a much broader view of the world, uh, whereas the certificate I'm working on uh, to develop, uh, and this is a, a maybe, um, is on quantum computing specifically. And a certificate basically means that uh, you take only quantum computing courses uh, and you get a certificate when you're completed that program. However, you optionally have, uh, if you choose to continue uh, that that certificate uh, can be stacked on uh, by taking a few of the normal master's level computer science courses uh, so that you know you you get your certificate then you take some various computer science courses then you'll have a master's degree in computer science with a quantum computing concentration so again let me stress those two with the asterisks are a work in progress, but uh, 
I, I just thought I'd take this opportunity to share that story. The focus for today is this ISIM degree in quantum information science, uh, the concentration for it. Uh, we do have uh, one PhD course already approved and in our cat course catalog, uh, and I'm working on another one as well. So, uh, but you know, that's not necessarily our strength uh, in the PhD uh, uh, space. Uh, just going back quickly, uh, I think this is an important part of the story overall. Uh, our high school programs, which uh, I don't think you guys uh, folks are interested in, but uh, it is an important part of the story uh, because it teaches us how to teach uh, people with near zero backgrounds. And that's really what I'm trying to do here at Harrisburg. So we, we had uh, a 10 week uh, program over the summer uh, that consisted of D-Wave, uh, Qiskit, Q-Sharp, uh, an algorithms course, and then we went into cryptography and the quantum internet. And again, these are for high school students. And we uh, presently are uh, taking enrollment for uh, a second batch of, of courses uh, starting in about two or three weeks. Uh, that is an introduction to computer to quantum computing and uh, uh, then follow up with an algorithms course and we'll be offering these things in the spring. Well most importantly for for us here, let me talk about the the ISEM uh, master's degree. Uh, it's it's essentially a kind of think of like a hybrid degree. Harrisburg is, you know, we are not a traditional school in in that our programs generally are uh, more oriented towards uh, what the market is looking for rather than you know, coming up from the historic uh, silos, if you will, of, of you know, mathematics and, and, and things like that uh, and physics, et cetera. We, we, don't, we don't structure ourselves like a traditional university, which can be a benefit or it can be a disadvantage. It depends what your objectives are. Uh, for example, we have programs in esports and that sort of thing here. Uh, but the ISEM program is a kind of like this this coming together of of topics in information systems, IT, uh, some bit of systems engineering, and mixed with a, a healthy dose of of management type courses. So. It's kind of like what I would call an IS, information science degree. Uh, you know, I think that's, that's the closest I could uh, come to, to articulate what it's about. Uh, you know, the more information is available on the website, but that would be the master's degree that, that you would have uh, in information systems, engineering and management. Uh, the concentration I speak of is is laid on top of that uh, on top of that ISEM structure, and we have four courses that are part of the concentration. Uh, I'll go through each of them briefly here. Uh, the first one is the foundations of QIS, which is a very uh, broad course. It's really a foundations course to get the student. Uh, really raise awareness, give some vocabulary to the students about uh, quantum information science. This is a course that's designed for not only QIS concentration uh, students, but also it's designed for anyone in the university. Uh, so, you know, just to get people uh, the opportunity in no matter what program they are, whether they're in biology or you know any of the other programs that we have in the university, it gives them an opportunity to take one course, you know, to get um, uh, quantum on their radar. So it's a very, very broad uh, and not not extremely deep course, but it it gives you an overview of you know some of the terminology, some of the concepts that we're all. Uh, familiar with, uh, but it also talks of, takes you into a little bit about the ecosystem, who the players are, a little bit about the you know what some of the modalities are of quantum that are being used for quantum computing. You know, so it's a very, very uh, broad and a not very deep course, but it does get people 
uh, conversant on uh, QIS and quantum computing uh, more specifically. Uh, the second course I, I highlight here is the programming quantum computer course. And this is where we, we start to take you, uh, the concentration students, uh, into uh, the uh, area of quantum computing. Uh, you know, these are all brand new courses. Uh, so the details of the courses uh, are, are yet to be configured. A lot of the, um, a lot of the, when you have a new program like this, the shape of a particular course uh, has a lot to do with the student's uh, background and student's interest in that course in these early days. So the, the range of possibilities in a pro course like this are, are quite uh, broad. It, it's a function of the student's background and again, their interests. So, but uh, we'll be focusing in on, on uh, you know, the programming. Uh, so what I mean is whether D-Wave's involved in that or not, uh, it, it depends. Uh, you know, by default, you could assume it's a universal uh, gate computer that will be uh, looking to to uh, utilize. Uh, I have this in course number order. So let me let me bounce forward here to uh, what would be the second course uh, after the computation uh, after the programming course. And here we would get into you know problem solving, algorithm development, uh, things that that many of us uh, get exposed to. Uh, in meetup groups and, and events online. Uh, but again, you know, you're in a college environment here, so you're earning college credits. So there are examinations and, and uh, activi graded activities that, that take you out of the realm of just, you know, watching a video, et cetera. Uh, but, uh, you know, here we're, we're getting into the algorithms. Uh, going back in, in the numbers again, uh, course numbers here. So uh, one course we have is, you know, what are the, what are the modalities of a quantum computer? You've got, you know, uh, optical systems, you've got, uh, you know, um, uh, semiconductor type of system. So here uh, we want to do a, not a super deep dive, you know, uh, we want to get students conversant in the hardware modality so that they could have a conversation or understand people in the field when they talk about the various uh, hardware approaches to uh, a, a quantum computer. This course here is, is uh, really about getting the student um, uh, engaged with the ecosystem. Uh, of the of the quantum realm, I I'm a big believer in if you are to to develop an expertise in an area, uh, part of that expertise by definition, in my view, is understanding the who's, the where's, uh, and you know who the players are, uh, what the what the growth rates are of VC investment in 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 the industry is what the top universities are, you know, who IBM is competing with, et cetera. So that's what this is about. Um, moreover, uh, the policies of governments are something that are, is really important if you're going to be in this uh, profession at any level. Uh, so, you know, we'll be talking about the policies of the United States, China, the UK, the EU, India, et cetera. It's, it's, it's a, a course designed to get someone familiar with the ecosystem and the policies and who the researchers are, et cetera. Uh, and then, uh, then we have kind of like this catch all course and this is emerging topics, which was really is a, a course that means that, uh, you know, it's, it's really the actual subject matter uh, is something that will change or may change from offering to offering. Uh, and, you know, it, it's really, here's really um, a function, what this consists of is a function of the students that sign up and what's important at the moment. 
you know, uh, for example, right now, uh, and probably for a little while, you know, error correction, for example, would be something that that is an important topic. So I could see this course if offered today uh, would have uh, some serious error correction components to it. Um, you know, just thinking off the top of my head, I'd also probably uh, want to put some quantum uh, networking uh, things in there uh, uh, among some other possible topics. So this is kind of like a catch-all. So uh, this, in short, is the, the menu of courses that are part of the uh, quantum information science concentration. I have the website listed here. You know, a Google, simple Google search for ISEM in Harrisburg will, will do the trick. Uh, let me step back a little bit and, and get more into uh, some of the broader philosophies, some of the approaches and ideas in the program. Uh, first of all, our program just started this fall. Uh, we have no students in it right now. I do have students taking individual courses, um, but no students enrolled in the program. And, you know, that's, that's not a surprise if you don't do any marketing uh, for your program. Uh, we are a small shop, so we don't have marketing teams working for us uh, and putting together brochures and all that. Uh, so uh, the marketing is something that we'll uh, begin to work on this year now that we've got the administrative aspects of the, of the concentration put together. Uh, we're in the midst of, you know, building a faculty. Uh, we were starting from zero and building up most of our Colleagues out there, other programs have, you know, a very, very deep bench, a very experienced bench, meaning their professors are world class. Uh, we at Harrisburg are just building. Uh, our tuitions and uh, our tuition reflects that. Uh, we've been stable at this uh, to 7,200 per year uh, for probably five or six years now. Uh, we are a low cost provider. Uh, and, uh, you know, hopefully it's, it's my responsibility to make sure that low cost gets high value return for students. Again, we have an open admissions uh, policy here. Uh, for applications, we're very nimble. That's one of the benefits of being a small and new player in this space. We're nimble. We move fast, relatively fast anyway. Uh, and uh, so we, we can take applications, you know, all the way up probably until a week or so before the semester starts, which is roughly the end of August or uh, the beginning of January. So uh, interestingly enough, too, that I didn't put on the slides, uh, we, again, we're, we're different. Uh, we actually have uh, six semesters a year. And what it is is we have the traditional you know, three semesters a year, fall, spring, and summer, summer uh, for graduate level. But we also have what's called, you know, a, a shifted, uh, uh, a phase shift um, for semesters. So we have what's called late fall, late spring, and late summer. So August and December I gave you for the traditional um, in uh, semesters, but we that can also be shifted. In fact, uh, this weekend, we are starting the late fall uh, semester for our graduate programs. So we can get you into a program, you know, essentially every every couple of months if you if you choose to, uh, you know, go off cycle on that. We do that because, again, most of our graduate students are employed and uh, it just seems to work out better uh, with employers if you go uh, off off you know, if your, your semester cycles are off by a couple of months, uh, you know, it helps with the budgeting and all that goodness. Uh, so, you know, uh, one or two more minutes on a monologue. So what we're trying to do here, which is vastly different, vastly different than the 15, 16 other uh, master's programs that we've had in this series, and that is we are not trying to create, you know, the, the, you know, the world-class expert student in quantum. Uh, it's our belief that as things develop, 
uh, in the quantum industry that 70%, roughly 70% of any quantum focused organization uh, will be non-PhDs. And uh, certainly there will be some high level master's degree students in that mix, in that 70%. But uh, we are in the business of, of filling in the gaps for the, let's say the the 60% of the organization. So people that may go into sales uh, or you know go work for a quantum startup, there's plenty of jobs and roles in, in these quantum companies that don't re require a PhD level of knowledge. And that's what we're trying to position for. Uh, you know, I think uh, pay you know, will be uh, better in these companies as time goes on, no matter what uh, your degree looks like. And so we're trying to train the rest of the organization and get them up to speed. We're not trying to create PhD uh, algorithm gurus here, uh, which is what we all aspire to, but you know, reality sometimes hits uh, for a variety of reasons. So we think that our program is uniquely positioned in the marketplace for uh, the the non uh, specialists, uh, uh, etc. And you know, uh, uh, I would say I'd be the first to say there's no way uh, we could compete with with uh, any of the other universities that are uh, highlighted in this master's uh, series. Uh, we are looking for a different type of student. We are looking for students who you know may already have uh, a job. Uh, in you know already have a programming job in classical computing and want to gear up for quantum uh, where they just need kind of like a kick start maybe a, a, a formal degree to support their applications etc uh, and they can pretty much fly on their own after that so I'll end here um, I think uh, I know I left a lot off, but uh, happy to take any questions or comments. If anybody has anything, uh, I'd be happy to uh, respond to you.